Thank you, Dave, and uh, welcome everyone, and thank you for joining us today. On behalf of the University of Colorado System, President Mark Kennedy and myself, I commend Rick George for his leadership in recruiting an outstanding coach who can accelerate the building momentum of our football program. Rick conducted a successful national search on a short timeline, and I'm thrilled to welcome Coach Carl Durrell back to the Buffs family. I know Carl from his past stints at the University of Colorado. I know his character, his experience, and passion for leading student athletes. That makes him the right fit at the right time for our program. And I'm thankful he decided to join us and I'm excited to uh, watch him get to work. I also want to thank our student athletes for their dedication to the program during two coaching changes in the past 15 months. They are fine representatives of our university, and I know their character and enthusiasm will mesh well with Coach Durrell as he leads them toward reestablishing our football team as a top-tier contender and competitor in our conference and nationally. As I've noted before, a successful football program raises the profile of the university as a whole, elevating the visibility of all of our achievements. Our student athletes often serve as ambassadors in this regard, juggling their classroom endeavors with all the rigors of being in the spotlight as Division I athletes. And they've done so admirably. Athletic departments wide, uh, athletics uh, department wide, our student athletes are currently carrying their second highest cumulative GPA ever. And our NCAA graduation success rate is 91%. Rick George stated last week that our football program is in better shape now than it was 15 months ago, and I wholeheartedly agree. We are on the cusp of something great. Coach Durrell's history at CU and high integrity give me great confidence that he knows how to guide the success to which we aspire, both on and off the field, while shaping young men who will live our campus imperatives of leading, innovating, and positively impacting humanity. And we will do all we can as the administration to support him and our program in these endeavors. And now I'd like to turn it over to our athletic director, Rick George. Thank you, Chancellor. Um, long time no see uh, for some of you. Um, welcome uh, back and, and, and thanks for coming out today. Um, I, I wanna thank uh, Coach Cheverini uh, for leading the program on an interim basis over the past two weeks and ensuring that our student athletes were taken care of. Darren's a great buff who cares deeply about our, re our program. I have a lot of respect and admiration for him, him. For him. I also see some of our former football players here, um, guys over here, Barry, Dave, Conley Smith, it's great that you're here. Coach Boyle being here, it's about family, uh, and it's about us taking care of each other. And um, I also would be remiss if I didn't thank Lance Carl, uh, who was my partner in crime on this, to be able to get somebody like Carl Durrell here. Um, couldn't be more excited uh, about that, and also Eastman Bodine and their support uh, through this process. It gives me great pride to introduce Carl Durrell as the 27th head football coach at the University of Colorado. When I sat here with a lot of you 12 days ago, I told you that we would work efficiently and effectively to find the very best head coach for the University of Colorado. I said that I wanted a coach who shared the same commitment and passion that I do for our student athletes and this great university and football program. Carl shares that passion. I also said that I wanted a coach that had the same commitment that I do, but also that had the same expectations that I do for our student athletes, winning in the classroom, winning in the community, and winning on the football field. Carl's that guy. You'll get to know Carl, but what I've learned about Carl is he's someone that has an impeccable character. 
He's got a maturity level that I think is important for our student athletes. He's got integrity and he's got this quiet, confident passion for young people. And he has great experience at the collegiate and professional level. He's got contacts in the West Coast and the Pac-12 having been here. And most importantly, he knows the history and tradition of the Colorado Buffaloes. Again, I said that I wanted to share this search to have someone that shared the same passion for Colorado football that I do, who believes that we can win championships with the resources we have. Carl coached here during a period when this program was a perennial top 25 team. He worked for Bill McCartney in 92 and 93 with a lot of the talent that Lance and I recruited, just saying. Um, um, uh, he was also the offensive coordinator uh, for Rick Neuheisel, 95 to 98. And he was a key part of our success at a time period when Colorado football was relevant, when people came in here and knew that they were going to play a tough football team. He knows it can be done and knows what kind of resources we have that we didn't have then. He and his wife, Kim. Kim, can you stand up right there? Kim Durrell. Built a new house a year and a half ago that I knew nothing about until Thursday. Um, and, um, you know, as you know, they love this community. They love this university. That's why one of the reasons why he's here. Uh, his daughter, uh, Lauren, played volleyball here um, two, uh, last year. Um, both children were born here. Chandler's here, I think, right there. Chandler, glad you're here as well. Um, was born here in, in Colorado. So um, I'm confident that we found the right coach for Colorado to not only build this program into a championship con contender, but having sustained success for a long period of time. Finally, and most importantly, I'm excited for our players, our student athletes, and I really appreciate their resolve and positive attitude over the past couple weeks. Our seniors have been incredible. They provided the leadership that this program needs in an interim basis, and I couldn't be more thankful for them. Our football student athletes are great young men, and I know that Coach Durrell is the right person to help them develop and grow. I truly believe we found a coach who will lead this program to many great things. With that, I'd like to introduce our head football coach, Carl Durrell. Thank you, Rick. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Chancellor DiStefano and Lance, uh, the Colorado community, thank you. Um, this, uh, this was a unique experience for me. This was a dream come true. Uh, you heard the last comments from, from Rick about we have a home here. And being an NFL coach and being in the NFL the last 10 years or so, um, very volatile business where you move around a lot. And we decided years ago that Colorado was going to be our home to stay when it was all said and done. And um, I did have that inkling in the back of my mind, though, that uh, my fondness for this university and getting a chance to be in this position uh, would be a dream. And uh, it came true. Uh, very thankful. Very thankful to be here. Um, my brother's here and his wife. Uh, I got, this is a family, this is a family uh, program. I want to just share my story as to why it's so important to me. Um, I came here as an assistant in 1992 as a wide receiver coach. Um, first Division I job, uh, worked for Bill McCartney. Uh, I've learned so much from a great man, not only from a football standpoint, but also from just as a person. Um, the one thing that you would know about Bill McCartney is that you know what he is through and through. What he believes in, he was passionate about people, and he was passionate about this sport of football. And I know in his 
way of teaching me early in my career was, Coach, these players, you got to make sure that you coach them, that they trust you and believe in you. And as soon as you get them to where you have a great relationship with them, you will get them to do almost anything and make them achieve the goals that they can achieve as players. And that struck with me for a long time in my career. So being his receiver coach for two years, had a lot of success. Um, but we know that the foundation of our team when Bill was the coach was our defense. Our defense was stellar, to be quite honest. Had great players, players that played in the league, players that made a lot of acc accolades along the way. They, they were the cornerstone of the success. As an offensive coach, I knew that the defense was going to get the ball back for us, for us to win. And there were many moments like that where that was the case for our success in the past. I still believe that. So my story coming here in 1992 and, and getting a chance to work for a wonderful coach and wonderful players was very instrumental to my makeup as I grew as a coach. The unique thing about this whole process is that we all aspire to do great things. I want our players to aspire to do great things. And it doesn't necessarily mean it's in the football arena. It can be in life. It can be in a number of different things that they have an interest in. That's why it's so important to know the people that you're dealing with. Our culture is important. I was visiting with our support staff, the coaching staff, and the people that are in and around our program. We have some work to do. We, we have to understand that with me in, at this position that I'm in, it's important that we really get a chance to know our players, know them on an intimate level, that we understand how they tick, what, they, what needs to be done to prod them to be successful, both on the field and in the classroom, and also to be there to love them up when they need that as, as mentors or father figures for them in their lives. That's the job of a coach. So our coaches will understand that. The staff that I bring here will have that understanding of we got to be in the people business. We have to develop the player. But first, you have to care deeply about the person. That's when the player, you get the most out of him. And I made that point in our meeting earlier this morning how that's relevant. That's what is going to get us to be a championship team, for us to be confident, for us to be poised, for us to be close-knit, confident in the guy that's next to, you, next to you, that we all are going to do our job, which will function into being playing great football. Our coaches and our culture, our players, we're going to develop our players to be tough-minded, to be battle-tested, to be smart, to have a love of, to compete and have passion for the game, to care deeply about each other, and most importantly, have one goal in mind, which is to bring a championship. We're going to get that done with our coaching staff that, that's part of the vision of our program. Our staff will consist of great teachers. I consider myself a teacher. I've been very fortunate in my whole career to be able to be led by a number of people, from my coach, Terry Donahue, Bill McCartney was an instrumental piece of that, Mike Shanahan was an instrumental piece of that. There's a number of really great coaches, legends in the game that have given me the opportunity to grow and to learn this great game. Very thankful for them to be a part of my background. But our staff has to be great teachers. That's first and foremost. The number one asset for any university are the students within it. We need to understand that as football coaches. We're going to develop them to be the best person that they can be so that we get the best player on the field. 
that's, that's kind of what we, that's our standby. I believe that success can be sustained consistently year after year if we're able to get these things done. And I know for a fact we can. Like I said earlier, it's an interesting story how I got here. It started way back in my early 20s, getting my first Division I job. My kids were born here in a Vista Hospital right in Louisville. I lived in Lafayette the last time I was here as an assistant. I moved back to Lafayette as my homestay, even though I've been in the NFL. Everything is aligned for me to be where I'm at right now today. And it's funny how the Lord gives you those blessings to give you an opportunity like this that's right there in front of you, especially for 32 years of hard work that's culminated to an opportunity like this. You're going to get from me the very best of me. You're going to get a guy that's here for the long haul. I built a home to prove it prior to getting this job. <laughs> You're going to get an exciting brand of football. I was telling our players earlier in our meeting, I said, what, what we do as a program stays within our program, but what we do on Saturdays will be a sight to be seen. So what we expect our players to do and what they expire to do, inspire to do for this year, they think they can win now. I was encouraged by that in our meeting this morning. So guess what? We're going for it now. We're going to ride their coattail. We're going to ride and drive them to be as good as they need to be. They know that it's going to take hard work. They know that it's going to take a commitment, a level of accountability, a, a cohesiveness, a connectedness. They know that a lot of those things that we'll work on in the process has to be established and built for us to be as good as we need to be. And we're going to go for it. We're going to put a great product out there and get it done. We're not going to use any excuses. We're not going to use because I got hired this late in the process and spring balls around the corner and we're not, we're not going to use those as excuses. We're going to get it done. That's what we have to do. That's, that's what their expectation is. And when young people are expired, inspired to do great things, you don't ever want to detract from that. You want to ride that. You want them to be the best that they can be. And they're telling you superficially that they're really, really ready to give you their best. I want to thank the coaching staff last year that put together, together this wonderful class that was, I guess, the rank 35th or 36th in the, in the nation. That's a great class to, to get us a, a boost of energy for what we've already done in the program. I'm very thankful for that. And um, I'm looking forward to building on this, this process. And I'm here for the long haul to do that. That's what I want you to know. This is my dream job. This is my dream job. You'll get the best out of me, and I'm sure that it's going to be reflected in the players that you see play on Saturdays. So I want to thank you. I want to thank uh, the Boulder community. Uh, it's happy to be back home. It's, it's funny how um, I was only spending about my summers, the only time that I would have a chance to spend any time here in the NFL season. You get the summers off, and you, know, you get four or five weeks off. So I'm usually at my home in Colorado here from mid-June to mid-July, and then I'm gone wherever I'm at. I was at the Jets for the last four years before going to Miami. Um, but now I don't have to make those trips anymore. So I'm happy to be home. Very thankful. So. Hi, Coach. Adam Munster Tiger, 24-7 Sports. Just curious. What you feel like you learned from that five-year stint with the Bruins that will kind of help you in this opportunity? It's a great question because it's, it's, we all learn through the process of, of a lot of situations and experiences that you go through. My first head coaching experience at UCLA, it was uh, a very rewarding experience, to be honest with you. It was uh, a challenge that, that, that I think that I really embraced 
to overcome. There's a lot of different things that are in and around the program that were, were very challenging to fix and we were able to do. And I think from that experience alone, it told me that it's really important that you really build your program with the right coaches and getting to know your players at an intimate level from day one. And I think that was something I didn't do early in the, my career there, there at UCLA, but I think has really expounded in a number of different ways, even in, as an assistant coach, how it's helped elevate everyone's level of coaching and of the product that you get from your players. And so the biggest thing I would say is, and like I've expressed today, was our players are our number one asset. Everything goes through them for their success. And I'm at an academic institution, which is a, you know, obviously to do the things well in the classroom and on the playing field. So those things go hand in hand and, and it would be, and it's really the, the main important factor of everything that we, we've done. Coach, uh, Sean Keeler with the Denver Post, welcome back. Um, I'm curious, both oh. you and the Chancellor and, and Rick also mentioned the players in the last 15 months, and that's a very salient point, especially to those upperclassmen who probably had their heads spinning, as you can imagine, in this profession. What did you say to them this morning? And what do you say to those recruits and kids who haven't met you who have been sold into this by somebody else and people completely different? That's a great question, too. It's, I met with the seniors last night, and, which I think was really a great idea from both Rick and Lance to, to, to bring them over for us to meet. Um, because for them, this is their last hurrah for, the, for, their, for their career, and, and it was a great statement of, of support and respect for us to do that actually the day prior to meeting with the team. And they were very appreciative of that. And we, we had really some great discussions. And a lot of it is what you would expect uh, kids to talk about, which was, you know, they want to be developed. You know, they want, they want to go for it all. They want to uh, use this year as, as a, a milestone for their life. And, and those, are, those are the aspirations that I want young people to have. I want them to reach for the stars. I want them to, to put themselves out there and, and go for what you think is attainable. And then as, as, as a supporter of that, I want to give them whatever I can to get them to attain that goal. Um, I think those are really important things. Like I said with the staff, they did a tremendous job of keeping the program moving forward in a strong direction, even though this search was going on and on. And I expressed that with the team as well about that takes character for you guys to do that and not really having any certainty about what's going on and who would be your leader. So young people are very resilient, as we all know, with, with our own children. And they can, they can get through almost anything. And there's also the part of me that I know about young people because I've had some, I, I, I've coached young people in the NFL in the best level of football and they're still kids. They still want people to instill confidence in them. They want people to believe in them and, and they wanna be coached hard so that they can reach the goals that they aspire to be. And that's at the professional level, and I know obviously that can be done at the college level. And that's what, that's what our, our task is as coaching and our coaching staff, is that we're here for them to bring out the best in them, both as a player and as a person. Coach Darrell, uh, Mark Johnson, Colorado Athletics. I'm wondering, you're with the Miami Dolphins, your receivers coach, and, and just in the last couple of weeks, I understand, we're given uh, a promotion there, the assistant head coach. That, that's a pretty uh, nice position for a guy that, that's maybe looking at, at a head coaching position down the road in the NFL. So tough to leave that. What was that conversation like with, with the head coach there at the Dolphins uh, when he made the decision then to, to come here and be the head coach for the Buffaloes? Thank you. Um, great question, too. That's a good story, and I, I, I'd, I'd like to share this for the Colorado faithful to understand, you know, the dynamics of what happened. And um, Rick alluded to it, but I'll go back in through it. Um, 
the combines this week as we speak uh, for the NFL. And we had Friday off. Coach Brian Flores, the head coach at the, with the Miami Dolphins, gave us Friday off to kind of have a weekend prior to going to work and doing what we do at the combine. And I left Thursday night from Miami to come here to have a couple days with my wife and, and son and, and family. And I was flying out yesterday to go to the combine in Indianapolis. And I get this call Thursday afternoon about, hey, would you be interested in this job? And that kind of floored me, to be honest with you. It, it, it really surprised me. And I said, absolutely. Well, when can we talk? I said, well, it's not, I told Lance on the phone, I said, well, I'm actually flying back to Colorado tonight. You know, I'll be there, you know, Thursday night. And then they, he went and talked with Rick, and, and then they got back with me a little bit later that day. And they said, well, can we meet at your house? And I said, sure. Okay, we can meet at the house. You know, and I get that. We want to be as discreet and discretion, you know, all those things. And so we, we set up the meeting. So after I was on the phone with both Lance and, and Rick, I sat back in my chair, and, I, and I'm like, oh, i got to tell Brian Flores what's, what's happening here. And so I went in to see him, and Brian's going to be a wonderful head coach. I mean, I love him. I've worked with him one year, and I feel like we've worked together for 15, 20 years. But I sit down with him, and he's, you know, he, I, I, ask, I tell him about the conversation that's happened, and, and he was very, very supportive. You know, he was um, very supportive. You know, this is a great opportunity. I know you have a home there, all, you know, all the different things that, that we've already said. So I... You know, we shake hands, we hug, we go back, and, you know, we're le I'm leaving his office. He's, you know, I really don't want to lose you, you know, but something like this just makes sense. So, anyway, I fly home. We have our meeting. I get offered the job, and, you know, I'm still floored, like, wow, this is just going so fast. This is unbelievable. And so I tell Kim. Kim was downstairs. She wasn't around, and she was shocked by it, and we were all, like, giddy, I guess you would say, giddy about it. And so I, I called Brian. I said, Brian, I, 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 I've been offered the job, so he's excited. He's really excited, okay? So remember, he just made me, promoted me to assistant head coach, and, and I really appreciated that from him because he, he entrusted me with being responsible for certain aspects of the, of the professional uh, organization, which I was very appreciative to do. And then, um, you know, they made it hard because they tried coming back to keep me uh, there. But, and, I, and I, I'll tell you this is that I would probably still be there because of where my career was going in the NFL if it was another college job. But because it was Colorado, my home, there was no one's going to, I was nowhere that's going to take me away from this job. So I know that I'm here for a reason. And I know that um, I'm, I've accepted the challenge of leading this program to greatness. And I'm, I'm going to work tireless hours to do that because it's, somewhere, it's a place that I believe in. It's, uh, it's part of my fabric. It's part of my background. And you guys are going to get the very best of me, which is going to be a very good football team. Your recruiting philosophy? Have you had a chance to really think about that, and how will you go about the recruiting aspect? We're, we're going to recruit naturally the areas that have been really productive for us. You know, that's the you know obviously our state is important. You know, we want really kind of the foundation of our best players in this state to stay here. So we need to do a great job of taking care of home. You know, that that's kind of if you want to say the heartbeat of your team is right here from home. So we want to keep our best players here. And there's some good programs that have really good players here. We need to make sure we take care of that. But California has always been big in our, in our history of having success. Uh, Texas has been big. Uh, Louisiana, you know. So that's, I would say the western region of the country, which is where our conference is, is really, that's probably our, our main primary base. And then I will have probably, from my experience in other places, you know, I lived in Florida for a while. 
Um, my son and daughter went to high school there, so I, we have connections there. So those would be kind of spot recruited, so to speak. Not primary areas, but connection areas. So those would be kind of the outlining areas. But, um, but I, I think we're going to continue what the path that we have right now. I think that's been very instrumental to our su success. Um, the type of player, I think that was the other part of your question. We're, we're going for the best players. You know, we're, we have a lot of proud history of great players in this, from this team, from this program. And I've had a couple of great ones at Michael Westbrook and Charles Johnson. Darren Chivarini was one of my players. We've had, I've coached some really good receivers here. There's been great defensive players, great quarterbacks. We have a good history of talent to display with some of our family about, you know, why this place is a special place. So we're, we're going to get back to recruiting the best players. Hey, Coach. Uh, Justin Guerrero, Rivals.com. I was just wondering how much of a chance you've, you've had to, to sit down with the current assistant coaches here on staff and what you kind of envision the next week or two on your end as you start to gauge and figure out who you might be looking to bring in, who you might want to keep, and all that kind of stuff. That's a good question, too. We're, we're actually going to start that process this afternoon. Um, I met with everyone just briefly just this morning, just as an introductory meeting. But we'll, we'll get right into to interviewing the guys that were highly recommended, which are the guys that are here um, to me this afternoon. So I do need to work fast on building the staff. Uh, I feel it's fair for me to get a chance to visit with them first. And and then we'll kind of piecemeal and go from there. So it'll probably be a process of over this week. I want to meet with my players individually as well. So it's going to be a busy time where it's probably going to be burning the midnight candle a little bit. But uh, I need to meet with those players individually for, for a time period as well. So I want to get that done. And there's a number of players to do that with. Coach, uh, Pat Rooney, Boulder Daily Camera. Um, Schematically, on both sides of the ball, it's been a 3-4 defense for quite a while now. Mel was trying to instill kind of a run-first offense. You know, are, are you going to change that much? Uh, and then the other side of that, uh, maybe the second part of the question, uh, spring practice, I think, is three weeks away. Is there any chance that calendar will be tweaked at all, uh, given how kind of late in the process we are with all this? You're, you're way ahead of me here. But... Uh... Yes, in answering your questions, we're, the last question about the calendar, we have to be receptive to that. That depends on how quickly I'm able to assemble the staff, you know, but that's something we'll visit with, and that's not a problem to do. Um, our players know that. I express that to them as well. Um, one thing about this staff, you have to understand this, I'm, I'm going to hire the right people. I'm going to hire teachers that I think are great communicators, that care deeply about our student athletes. I think those are the along with their trade. So they have to have these qualities that, that build up this staff. And remember, I told you guys earlier, I'm here for the long haul. I'm not here to quickly piecemeal a staff and, and then away we go. I want to build it for, for years to come. Okay, so that's going to be a little bit of a process, so it might change our spring calendar. Okay. Um, as to the... I guess there's a couple things here. Um, you're asking about our style of play, and I, I just want to give you a preview of how I envision our, our, our team. And it really comes from my, fat, my last experience here. Um, we had the cornerstone of our, of our program was our defense. I'm an offensive coach, a wide receiver coach, quarterbacks, passing game, all that stuff. But I knew from the very heart of hearts, the, the program came from the cornerstone, which was our defense. Whether it was the Alfred Williams, Canavis McGee's, Chad Browns, I can go on and on, Deion Figures, uh, Beekert. I mean, there's a number of great players that played in this league and played on a professional level, but it was the cornerstone of the team. I still believe in that as an offense, offensive coach because if I have a great defense, they're turning the ball over and giving me more turns on offense. And that's what an offensive coach wants is more turns because you get more points. And we didn't have a problem scoring points 
when we were here offensively, where I've had a couple of receivers that, matter of fact, Charles Johnson and Michael Westbrook were both thousand yard receivers here in college on this, you know, they were a thousand yard receiver tandem. So we were able to function well prolifically offensively with the defense being really the cornerstone of, of who we were. Special teams are critical in today's game, like it is in, last, in any game, but I think special teams and game management are really critical pieces to winning the tight games. You know, the close games where it's against a great opponent and it's coming down to the wire, you know, there's some execution that needs to be done effectively for it's not just kicking the field goal through the upright, but there's some decisions that need to be made that prior to getting to that position that are going to be important as to why you win those games. So special teams is just that X factor of you want to make sure that area is better than most that you go against. So that's kind of my vision. It's going to be led by a tough stellar defense. Uh, we're 3-4 base right now. We're kind of built for the 3-4. Matter of fact, the last time I was here, we were a 3-4 team. Um, I'm good with that because it's a great defense to adjust to with these offensive sets that offensive coaches do. So I think it's a good foundation for our defense. Um, offensively, I like balance. You said there were a run, run, and throw. I like balance. I'll tell you that. We're going to throw the football for sure, but we got to be able to run the football. And, you know, the best it's ever been, and probably hasn't been that way since, is when you, we've had the Heisman Trophy runner with Rashawn and two prolific receivers outside that he had 2,000 yards rushing and they had 2,000 yard receivers throwing. I'd say that's pretty good offense. So we're, it just depends on where our strengths are. Okay, but I think the goal is that we want to be balanced. We want to definitely have a run threat and be able to run the football, but we're going to be able to throw the ball as good as anybody, if that helps you. Carl. Terry Fry from Mile High Sports Magazine. Okay. Given your background and the serendipitous fact that you have a house here and your passion for CU, if I'm following the timing and the dynamic right, they came to you. Did you were you tempted at all? Did you want to aggressively try to pursue this job? rather than sitting back and waiting? Great question, and that did come up in our sub-talks here. <laughs> um, did I want to pursue it? Yes. Uh, I'm very fond and have close relationships with a number of coaches that are, in, that are from this program. Matter of fact, one specifically that's down the way at Kansas City. Um, I'm very close with, with Eric, and I, this was something uh, that I was being the respectful guy of understanding where he was in the process. Um, but I would say, yes, in the back of my mind, uh, I would love for Colorado to talk with me. But I, I knew there were some guys that I was close with that had really great connections and had background and history here in, in, this, in this program that they would have an interest as well. Henry Chisholm from uh, DNBR uh, to your left. Um, when you're filling out this coaching staff, you had, uh, I mean, you have a lot of ties with NFL coaches, with college coaches. Which of those types of guys are you most interested in bringing into this program? Great question. That's, I still will lead, go back to, we need to bring in really good teachers. Okay. So that's, those, that's the quality in my mind that sticks out, whether it's the college level or the professional level. Um, I've been around in both levels where there weren't really great teachers, but they're in college and they're same thing in the NFL. They weren't great teachers, but they're in the NFL. There's, there's something that clicks to me when I've interviewed and evaluated coaches that fits really the, the, the profile that I'm looking for. For example, you know, you know, my, my staff at UCLA that I did have that was a really good staff were really, really good coaches. Um, John Embry was on that staff, former buff, obviously a former leader of this program. You know, he's has a great NFL career. He's assistant head coach in San Francisco. Eric Bienemy was on my staff as my recruiting coordinator and running backs coach. And obviously we know where Eric is and where he is in his career. Um, Tom Cable, 
who was on my staff as the line coach, you know, obviously he's, he's one of the best line coaches in the NFL right now. It can um, Dino Babers, you know that name? He's the head coach at Syracuse. Uh, Mike Norvell, he's the head coach at Reno. Uh, Kyle Shanahan was, was with me briefly as my graduate assistant at UCLA, and you know who Kyle Shanahan is. So I've, I've had a number of really good coaches that I've had in my, on my staff before. So from, from my experience, I kind of will use my own intuition as to the style of coach that I'm looking for as a teacher. Uh, I think I have a good background of looking at talent for that, and we're going to build it to make sure that those qualities are in place, whether it's professionally or from the college level. Coach, when you look at across the country, just alumni and donors and, and people that, that turn the wheels financially or help to with this institution, what is your philosophy for kind of overchallenging or overcoming rather the challenge of earning these, these people's trust just to might be a little bit shell shock still, and just uh, how the the end of the Mel Tucker era came about. That's a, that's that's another very important question that I, I brought that you brought up there. You know, the first thing that I know as a coach in that I that I told our players, and I told this to the support staff as well, is that I have to I have to earn their trust. I, I really do. And before we talk about the money thing you you mentioned, but. I think the foundation of anything we do is that I want the people that are working with me and the players that are working with us to know really what's my fabric, what is, what's important to me. Am I out for his best interests, uh, which I am. I, I need to express all of those things to kind of gain the trust factor of, of those players to believe in the, thing, the message that we're doing as a program. And I need my coaches to do the same thing. They have to build that trust level within their respective positions, again, really s spreading that message, okay? So that, that goes hand in hand. I know that universities have restrictions in certain areas. I know that. I've dealt with that in my, in my past. Um, there's no perfect scenario. There's no perfect scenario where, um, you know, you're going to have every resource you need to, to get the, the job done. I don't think life is perfect. You don't, I've been through enough of those things already as a coach, and, and we all have as, as just in everyday life. So I think the better thing of, of answering the question is, are we willing to work with each other? You know what I mean? And sometimes it might mean that I can't get what I need in this area, and, but they'll try to do something in other areas to help improve the, you know, our, our situation and what we need. Um, I'm very, very grateful, thankful of, of me having what I currently have to build my staff. My salary pool is tremendous to me. And they've awarded me with, with that, and I'm very, very flattered to be able to work with, with, that, with those numbers. Um, and I know that there's, I mean, there's academic admissions. There's a lot of things that go on in, in a program. And I've dealt, we've dealt with those things in the past. But I'm, I'm the type of coach that's willing to do what the policy is, basically. And if there's certain things that need to be tweaked or anything like that, then we would do that. But I feel like we're in really good shape. I feel that Rick and, and Chancellor DeStefano has really given me a great opportunity to build a good staff, to have the resources that we need for recruiting, to, you know, we have the supplemental areas in and around our football program dealing with whether it's the, the nutrition and, you know, the weight training uh, to the, you know, mental health to the academic support. I mean, all of those things that we've talked about in our meetings, they know how instrumental those things are for me and for our success, and they've addressed those areas. So I'm, I'm very, very pleased. Coach, what, Rick? you talked a lot about being a teacher, not just coaches. What, how would you describe your teaching style, and what is the difference to you in being a teacher than just coaching? It's going to be a long press conference for that, but it's a, I, I would say this, I, I can only do it from my own experience. 
for example. So I'm going to relate it to, to coaching receivers, which is what I've been doing the last few years. Um, I kind of look into my craft as a coach as, as I look and get to know our, the players. They're all different sizes and shapes. You know, some are faster than others, some are taller, you know, some are stronger. Some have this X ability and some have this X, you know, Y ability. They all are, are different. To me, that's, that's like painting a canvas, to be honest with you. I, I view it that way is because as a coach, I'm drawing out, I'm trying to draw out the very best in, in every one of those different profiles. So in doing that, it's not the same message to say to, to profile A that you might say to profile D. It's you have to be clever enough and crafty enough to get the best out of those players, given their personality and also given their skill set. Some guys pick up information a lot faster than others. You know, some need, need a little more reps than others. That's the beauty of coaching, in my opinion. It's, that's what keeps it fresh for us, is that being passionate about impacting these men to be the best that they can be. And sometimes the method of it as a teacher changes from just being the general chalkboard method. It might be, you know, I'm going to have to have walkthroughs with this guy, or he needs more video time, or um, maybe you have a smart guy that he, he gets him mainly by just you and I just talking face to face. There's so many different types of learning styles. And that's what the staff needs to understand. It's not any one message that you can get your point across. There's a number of ways to do that. And I think the staff has to be clever enough to understand that. Two more questions and then we've got to go to TV one-on-ones. Coach, I was curious if uh, over the last 12 years since you were let go by UCLA, have you had other head coaching opportunities? And second part of that, did you ever question as you, know, you get older whether you'd get this opportunity again? I did have other options or opportunities to look into. Um, there was my experience at UCLA. I think that the that was a great experience that I learned a quite a, quite a deal of things that I put in my notebook from that experience. You know, of, I, I think it's important at this level um, is to feel like you can can build your program and have the resources to do that, to be successful. I think that's been in place here. I don't think there's a lot of places that, you know, I was playing, coaching at the, at the professional level, and at that level, there is no limit of, or lack of resource, for example. Um, I think in college football, you need a certain some certain resources to be successful, to be able to have the ability to hire a really good staff. I think that's important. The recruiting piece is having enough in that support area to be successful. Those are, those are important. Um, obviously, facilities, this is one of the best I've ever seen. In the, in the background of the flat irons here, I mean, that's, that's what drew me to this place back in the 1992. It's, there's enough here to kind of get your blood churning a little bit about how special this place is. Um, I didn't, I was asked many times by some of these guys that I just mentioned to you that were on my staff about how come you're not back in college? Well, I just didn't feel that that opportunity was there that had all of those things that I needed to be successful. And then this one came along. And, and me being fond of this area and this school, um, what it's done. I've seen the facility before two years ago. Um, what they were expressing to me about what they want to be coming to bring back, that was, that was a no-brainer. And like I said, it, it, this, was, this was a blessing. It was uh, something that I think um, was bound to happen, and I think it was meant to happen. Monica Costell, Associated Press. You've mentioned all the changes, and uh, I would like to know your opinion on the loss of the hill from the, the fields, the practice fields, to coming back up to Dal Ward. Uh, 
is that a good thing? You kind of miss it, not having a, everybody going up the hill. That was a tradition, wasn't it? I know. Um, it's amazing to me, and I haven't really walked around the campus grounds, but I know that that was a very, that was an important walk. You know, that was something that we, that was part of kind of our, part of our program, to be honest with you. Um, but I look, I drove in on, you know, the campus today with Lance, and we turned the corner from, you know, down here at Folsom, we're coming up towards the facility. And the last time I saw how it used to be, the Dow Ward was the palace, you know, and, and now this new facility that's over on the, on the left side of it. It's, it's just amazing the transformation this university has taken um, in a number of ways. I love how the university uses the same flagstone, even with it's a new building or not, to make it all look uniform. I love that. I've always loved that when I was here in my, my earlier stints. Um, I guess my, my, my answer to you is that, you know, there's kids change, you know, in a way. Um, it, and, but I think from my perspective, I'll, I, I don't mind expressing how important that role was for us in our, in our program from years past and what we used to do. And, uh, and you know, the people that were from the Mac era, they, they know what that hill's, hill's been. Um, but I'll, I'll definitely keep it alive in, in memory of, man, this is how it used to be, and you guys don't understand the work that used to, used to occur on that hill. But um, it would definitely still be a part of us.